Welcome to a Prevent Connect podcast, where we explore the prevention of violence against women. This is a project of the California Coalition Against Sexual Assault. This exercise I created with um, our empowerment evaluator, Jennifer Avina, as it says there. So, um, we use this one specifically when we're trying to help mostly advocates think about kind of not, we're not the, the levels of prevention, but not because it's vital for them in our world to like exactly understand the differences of the levels, but more so to help folks think about, well, what kind of activities can I do, and what are the messages around it? So to do this exercise, I would first do a little mini lecture, or I would pull from them through a focused conversation what they know about prevention, give some of the facts and figures, you know, kind of have some engagement about the content, and then use this more as the, um, the stuff of it and the really getting them to chew on it. Um, I've often taken a slide such as this one, which I believe I stole from um, probably the Prevention Institute folks and Prevent Connect um, about the levels of prevention. And I even might give them that um, as a handout. And I'm mostly saying to folks, well, we're going to take a look at some messages um, and figure out what level of prevention they're at. So when we look at each of these um, campaigns, these public awareness campaigns, we're talking about, okay, so who's the audience for this campaign? What's the intent of the message? You know, what are they trying to get to change? And, and therefore, what level of prevention is it at? Just another gimmick, right, to, to have them have this conversation. So, who can read? No, I know you all can read. <laughs> Be here in the room. Who will read this poster text for me? Out loud. Jessica, you stood up. Go for it. I was finding you a microphone. <laughs> I know, I don't know how to use it. All right, well then Tammy will do it. Oh, you, you do do it. Do it. Read the poster text. The poster says, Rape can take away your self sense of safety, trust, and self-esteem. It can make you feel isolated and alone. The way to reclaim your life is to talk with someone who can help, like a counselor, a friend, or a family member. Because the longer you keep it to yourself, the harder it is to make it go away. Okay. So who's the audience for this poster? Survivors. And what's, you know, what's the message or what's the intended change we're looking for them to do? Call for help, reach out. So what level of the prevention spectrum would you put it on? Tertiary. Tertiary. Could be a little secondary. Can somebody say, what, what's the secondary in it that you think? Yeah. Right. It could be even secondary in that it's kind of helping them identify some of those, I feel isolated, I feel alone. It's giving them some of those um, ways that they can this is what happens with all survivors. So that's the kind of progression, you know? And if you look at the presentation, I just pulled these off of the internet. You could really do any of the messages you want. This one says, um, music blasting, kegs flowing, bodies pulsing, extreme party. Using her for sex because she's drunk, extreme stupidity. Who's the message, who's the audience for this one? College men, I think I heard. Frat boys, I want to say. Okay. What's the message or the intended outcome from this poster? What are they looking for? Lula? Prevention. Prevention, but what are they trying to prevent? Don't use her for sex. Right. Don't use her for sex. Rape. Okay. Drug facilitated rape. Okay. And so, what level of prevention is this? Primary. primary. Can you say how it's primary? It's before it happens. But is this poster assuming that it will happen? A little bit, right? 
it's kind of saying, if you party, if you flow the kegs, if you pulse your body, you know, the likelihood is that the, in our culture, there's a cultural norm that those things will, will necessitate, will, you know, rape will ensue. So, so for me, this is more of a secondary message, because it's a message that's saying, we know it's going to happen, but you could stop it from happening, but we're, good, we're assuming that it will happen. So, I mean, I'm being quick with you. I would have asked lots more questions and gotten you all to talk to each other to kind of talk about those different aspects, because for me, it isn't, every, you know, a bunch of stuff is here, and a, you know, in primary, and a bunch of stuff is here in secondary, and then never, never the two blend. They do blend, so for me, at least. So, I can see ways that this is little bits of primary. I can see ways for me that it's lots of bits of secondary. So this is just kind of the, the way this one goes. So here's a bunch that, you know, um, some norms-based campaigns where you're trying to say, and back up a second, you know, the big message is 83% of college men respect their partner's wishes about sexual activity. And the little message is trust your instincts. If it seems unclear, so, you know, it's a consent message. The other one, Again, backing up, 74% of college men would intervene to prevent, so a bystander type message. And then it's deeper into that bystander, be a friend, well time murders. So you would talk through this one as well, you know, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. But not so much on, like we could have some more on. This one I want to pause on because men, I'm, I'm guessing that. Some of you might not have seen it, and it's a different kind of application of all of the ones previously were kind of college-based, maybe. Um, yeah, a lot of them college-based. That's where we have a lot of our campaigning going on. This comes out of Minnesota and the um, Initiative for Peaceful Families. And uh, this is for workplace. So um, I can do my best work here because we all respect, there's awareness of others and power, there's a sincerity, there's safety, and there's acceptability. Who's, the, who's this message to? If it's a workplace one. Yeah, employees. Might even be, if you have this in a customer service type area, maybe the customers would see this. So what's its intended message? Or what's its up? <clears throat> what are they trying to achieve here? Workplace safety. Maybe some shifting on the norms around the workplace. Positive relationships. Lots of building relationships, maybe some wellness stuff. So what kind of prevention does this feel like? Primary, can you say more, Karen? Karen? Yeah, it's promoting the behaviors we want others to adopt. It's naming the behaviors that we want them to adopt, and it's really promoting those behaviors, sorry. Um, what, what a, lots of pro-social messaging here, right? Is this poster going to work all on its own to create this as a primary prevention workplace? What, are, what other stuff is it going to need? Policies. Maybe some policies. What else? Training. Trainings, <laughs> maybe. Some, some one on one skills about We just went through Melissa's uh, ex, you know, presentation about the implementation system, so I'm trying to practice that. And then um, the last thing I want to pull up, oh, this is a campaign that I just came across from Praxis International. It's a, a, a Native American-based campaign. Um, and so these say, there, and there's four of them, I could only show two. Um, our children carry the lessons from our ancestors and the hopes for our future. Give them a home where their mothers are free from domestic violence and one that loves them and honors them. It's kind of like a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's that one of those campaigns that is at a couple different levels, right? Yeah. Not pretty, I thought. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is show you this PSA if I can get it to work. Um. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Let's get 
a little bit rowdy. R O W D Y. Take time to be a dad today. One more time. Today. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. In the beginning, it's a shot of the grandmother in the living room doing crochet. And she's hearing her son going, oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys. You know, so she's hearing them. And then you're panning to see him a little and then her. And, uh, you know, there's not that many examples of PSAs that are trying to take that, that primary prevention. And so it's easy to show all the ones where we're saying, stop it now. Or say even those early um, the the coaching boys to men PSA the first one they did where it showed the fight in the diner and the dad with the boys wait wait I should assume a dad a guy with the boys and it was like teach early but teach you know like so it didn't go far enough and they even diagnosed that and kind of took it to another level so um, that's what I got for that. Thank you for listening to this Prevent Connect podcast. Prevent Connect is a project of the California Coalition Against Sexual Assault with funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The views presented on Prevent Connect are not necessarily the views of the United States government, the CDC, or CalCASA. To learn more about Prevent Connect, visit www.preventconnect.org. For more information about CalCASA's mission or to show your support, visit calcasa.org. That's C-A-L-C-A-S-A dot org.